What's up, people? Sorry I didn't do this video yesterday. I was, I was just fucking tired. Like, when I was gonna get ready to do it, I was, I was yawning, like, every, like, minute. So I figured that's not gonna look good in the video. So I'm just gonna do two today. Doing this one right now, and then later tonight, I will be doing, um, Buckaroo Banzai, which is actually a recommendation from my friend Mara. So I'll review that later. And then tomorrow, um, Hellraiser 6. So, but... Uh, today I'm doing From Russia With Love, the second Bond film, um, probably one of the more famous names, but I'm going to be honest, it's not a bad movie, I think Connery still kills it, I liked Ali, he's like, he was like, um, head of M uh, MI6, who Bond's working with throughout the film, and Robert Shaw is the villain, or one of them, so it's always good to see him, but I'm sorry, this movie isn't bad, it's just kind of I think it meanders. I think it should not have been two hours. I think at times it drags, but it's a fun film. And I, I also don't really like the Bond girl in this one, Tatiana, who she's um, working with Spectre, but then eventually defects, you know, that classic story with a lot of the Bond movies. I just feel like she was just kind of, she felt like a robot at times, like a legit, she felt like she was playing an android. She had like no emotion. It was just the way she delivered lines. At least, like, the Bond chick from the last film had something about it. Like, she wasn't the greatest actress in the world, but she was decent. In this one, I just feel like she was kind of boring. I did enjoy Rose Cleb, I think is her name, as the, the, the main... She's basically the main villain. Who who actually is working, who uh, defected a Spectre, but secretly still acting like she works for his MI6, or basically acting like she works for the good guys. Um, you have some cool action scenes. Um, I thought the... Connery still kills. Connery, to me, he is Bond. The way he just carries the character, even re-watching it. So, I mean, obviously, it would be fun to see the other Bonds. As I'll admit, Roger Moore has like, always been one of my favorites, too. But the way Connery plays it, like, every time he's on screen, is just... Even the way he's introduced, he's, like, having a, a lunch date with, his, uh, with a girl, and then he gets the call. It's like, he just plays it so fucking smooth. Like, even when he's not even doing action scenes. Like, even when he just walks into a building. Or just... <clears throat> it's like he... Like, that's why, to me, he is Bond. The, the way he just personifies the character. say <coughs> from Russia with love is definitely like a <coughs> I'd give it like an 8 out of like a 7 out of 10 I think it's <coughs> mostly a good movie <coughs> you got some gadgets <coughs> you know you always got a banger intro with these Bond in movies <coughs> you know like in horror movies where you have like the theme of the, <coughs> of the killer I love how in Bond movies <coughs> Even when he's just doing something one day, like checking a wall tell, his fucking theme starts playing. <coughs> I love his theme. Like, to me, that is like one of the most famous mo character themes ever. <coughs> <coughs> Even in some of the later ones, I really like they don't really change it. Like they, they might change the tune a little bit, but... <coughs> <coughs> but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed From Russia With Love. It's not a bad movie. I think it just it whittled it down a little bit. <laughs> I understand. Older movies didn't have the greatest. No. And when I mean older, like I mean like past like 1970. <coughs> like before 1970. That's what I meant to say. <coughs> like before 1970. Not all, but there's a lot of movies like some of the pacing's weird. And that's just because they weren't really paying attention to that. It was more about making a movie than, oh, we gotta worry about like the pacing and stuff. So <coughs> they almost give older movies a pass for that. Like, Pat, you know, pre-1970. <coughs> but, yeah. Um, this one was fun. Um, it was a young Robert Shaw as the villain. One of the villains, um, Grant, who's, uh, who's uh, working for um, Spectre. Great. You know, you have, like, a lot of those Bondisms in this still. So, And probably my favorite scene in the whole movie is not even an action scene. It's the... When they're, like, this gypsy thing, and there's, like, a girl dance, belly dancing, not gonna lie, <laughs> that 
Actually, I might make that. I, I had a different thumbnail, but I might make that the thumbnail. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so overall, 7 out of 10 movie. I definitely recommend it. It's the second. It's not the best entry in the franchise, but it's definitely a decent one. And like I said, just if you want to see um, Sean Connery just be a badass, that's really all I would say. So let's get started here. Uh, later tonight, like I said, Buckaroo Bunzai review will probably be. I'll try to do it tonight for sure. It'll be tonight for sure. So, cheers. shoots it. I love that intro. <coughs> we find out that Spectre um, want, basically they want revenge for what happened to Dr. Nell in the last movie. <coughs> so their plan, and we're actually introduced to, to Grant pretty early on in, in the movie. Because <coughs> we see him training to kill Bond. Because you initially think it's actually Sean Connery, but it's like a, a face mask. So basically, Spectre wants revenge for what happened. So their plan is to lure Bond to Russia. Uh, Rose Kleb is the main, is uh, actually one of the people who's working with them. She's essentially, all intents and purposes, kind of the main villain of the movie. She plans to use Tatiana, um, basically, she knows Bond is really into women. You know, she's going to use her to, like, trap him. So while this happens, Bond gets called in. I actually love his intro. He's like out at a lunch date. And um, the girl clearly really wants to be, dude. Because it's like he's on the phone and she's like trying to touch it. It was, it was funny. And then, yeah, like just Connery, man. I just, in a lot of these, especially the Connery ones, I'm going to be saying that a lot. He's just so, the way he plays it, he plays it just, it's like a glove for him. It's just like... He plays it, like, when I think probably the most suave Bond, it has to be Connery for me. I mean, I think Brosnan was pretty suave, too, from what I remember. But the way Connery just did it, it was, like, natural. Like, just every scene he walks, even just, like, a mundane scene. Like, when he walks into, like, a hotel, or he's checking in a hotel, or he walks into MI6. Like, it's just the way he just carries himself. It was just so, so good. Anyway. So, he gets asked to help with this mission, um, and this is where he meets Ali, who's the head of MI6. I thought he was a fun character throughout the film that Bond worked with. Uh, you know, Bond checks in the hotel, and you could tell that Don, uh, Donald was following him, because he's, um, he's an Irish assassin who can, like, you know, he takes people's other ideas. And I actually liked he's not, he doesn't talk much, like, he does talk a little bit towards the end. But I do like he. they try to have him, like, kind of quiet. And he's almost like Bond's equal a little bit. Because, you know, they have a fight towards the end, and he takes it to Bond a little bit. So, this is where I'm just going to jump. Because the film drags a little bit here and there. But, yeah. So, Bond ends up uh, meeting Tatiana. They have um, sex. And I'm sorry. Tatiana, to me, is not... She's probably... Granted, this is my only second one I've rewatched, so we'll see. Because uh, I'm definitely going to be watching the other movies. But I just feel like she's one of the weakest Bond girls. She didn't do it for me. It was even, like, the girl from the last one. Like, she wasn't anything special, but she was, I'd still say, decent. I feel like this girl just, no disrespect to the actress, I just don't think she did it for me. Every scene she was in, she just felt kind of boring. She said every line like she was a legit robot. Like, and I'm like, like, I'm like, put some umph into your voice lady like just something so i'm not gonna lie every scene she was in i was cringing i was like like there's like no emotion there with her it's just and also i just feel like her and connery didn't even have any chemistry really like every scene together 
I didn't feel like, yeah, there was no, they didn't, it didn't feel like there was any vibe or anything. Like, like, at least I felt like a vibe with the other girl. So while, um, out at a gypsy, uh, settlement, this is where we get the, the belly dance scene, which I'm not gonna lie, it's like my favorite scene the whole movie. Gotta give props to that who that, uh, hula, that belly dancer. But then, yeah, it ends up, we get a scene of the, these two girls starting a fight, and then, uh, basically Spectre attack, and we get, like, kind of a shootout. Um. And uh, you could tell um, Tatiana is like starting to have like almost second thoughts about doing things for Spectre. And I, you know what, I'll say this too. This feels like it doesn't feel like fully a sequel. It does feel like an episode two in a good way of like the Bond story. And I think that's a good thing because the Bond Bond was originally a book, so. It, it it works like you like this feels like a, a definitely another novel like another story it doesn't just feel like oh this is just a sequel which i mean that's what a sequel is but i also do feel like it it, it feels different reading a sequel versus obviously watching one and i think they captured that feel like this feels like a book like the, clearly a book sequel that's just made into a film so because you know the way they add more specter you get more um tech you know, you always get that classic Bond gadget moment, which I love. Um, we then, I'm going to jump ahead again. Um, Ali ends up getting killed by a Grant, who's posing as another agent. And they end up kidnapping a... Um, Kidnapping um, him and um, I forgot Katiana. I don't know why I forgot her name for a sec. Tatiana, who I just every even that scene like when she has a gun on her, it just didn't. She didn't some emotion like you got a gun on you. There were good actresses back then, so I'm just like, come on. I think she's definitely the weak link for me for throughout the movie. Was her? I just I didn't. And also, just like I said, her and Bond didn't have chemistry at all. Like, I honestly felt like Bond had more chemistry with the, the girl he, hook, he was hooking up with earlier in the film. They only saw once, and then you never see again. I'd almost rather her than, than the Bond girl, because she at least felt like she had something about it. The girl in this, just no disrespect, and I get the story they were going for. It just, eh. Because throughout the film, um, Webb, not Webb, um, I think her name's Rose. Cleb, that's what, that's what it was. Cleb. Um, is potent. She's also acting like she's working with the good guys, but she's actually working with the bad guys. So Grant kidnaps um, Bond and Tatiana. We get a fight between Bond and Grant, which all of it is pretty good. Um, you know, for an old 60s movie. Bond ends up tricking Grant and basically killing himself. And I'll admit, it was cool, you know, getting a little bit, it, it, I always, it's always cool to see Robert Shaw in something that's not Jaws, and a young, kind of a young Robert Shaw. This was like, you know, about, um, I think 12 years or so before Jaws, so, and, uh, yeah, I thought he was cool, you know, I kind of wish he was the main villain, like, I thought he was fine as, like, the, the physical villain, while Cleb is, like, the, the mastermind villain in the background, so Bond ends up going back to the hotel. Cleb posing as um, a maid tries to attack her, him and Tatiana. Bond and her struggle. The gun gets dropped. Tatiana manages to get the gun and shoot Cleb. I thought uh, Cleb was a pretty decent character. Like I, As a villain, she works. I thought you know she wasn't the greatest villain. Obviously, she's more like the background villain. But I thought she was decent. And then, yeah, her and Bond and Tatiana hook up, film over. I, I really like this one. And I'm not going to lie, there's a, a line in here. Like, because he was getting, um, I think Bond was ordering, like, coffee. And he's like, coffee, black. I'm not going to lie, that was pretty funny. But this is a good one. It's a bit, it drags a little bit. I'll admit, that's like my only real negative is that it drags a little bit at times. I'm like, there's some scenes where, that's why I didn't want to go, I, I kind of wanted to hit the main 
big points of the movie because it does kind of drag a little bit. But it was all, it's always, I love seeing them. I love the gadget moments in these movies where Bond gets more gadgets. I love the bad guys. You know, Spectre is this big organization. So it's just, it's easy to like tell more stories because it's not just one guy who's a bad guy, right? It's an entire organization. So you can always just have a different person. And, you know, keep telling the stories why it works. Um, Connery, to me, just, he is Bond. The way he carries himself, you know, just every scene. It doesn't matter which. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't even have to be an action scene. It can just be, like, a scene of him just checking into a hotel or just talking to somebody. So, yeah. Um, I love these movies. Um, this one, like I said, it's not my favorite one for sure, but it's definitely a fun one. I definitely recommend it. And I like, because technically, Dr. No isn't, like, actually, like, the first book. I think it's, like, fourth or fifth or something like that. Um, book, actually, in the series. So, I actually, like, the way they... I do like that you could tell Bond's been doing this for a while. They did a good... I do think they have been both this and Dr. No. I really do like it. It feels like, yeah, Bond's been doing this for a while. And, you know, this world has been kind of... Shit's been going on for a while. It's not like this. It just started. <laughs> but I definitely recommend it. <laughs> Just to see Sean Connery as more Bond, it's always fun. So, <laughs> for sure, on Tuesday next week, we will be doing, in my opinion, my favorite Bond film. It's like one of my favorite Bond villains. <laughs> With uh, Goldfinger, we're doing Goldfinger. <coughs> <coughs> when I was really into Bond, I, that was the one that I, whenever I think Bond movies, is that one. <laughs> and that's the film we get Pussy Galore. So, yeah. I mean, with a name like that. So, yeah, I can't wait to do that one next week. <coughs> yeah. But as usual, Buckaroo Bonsai review later tonight. I've never seen it. Um, from what I hear, it's it's out there. It's one of those kind of movies, so I can't wait to watch it. <coughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, from Russia of Love, 7 out of 10. Maybe 7.5. I'll bring it up a little bit. I mean, Connery, it's just always good to see Connery as Bond, so we'll be doing that. But as usual, talk to y'all tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, tonight with uh, Buckaroo Bonsai. Joe Biden. Talk to y'all tonight. Peace.